Hello, I'm Casey Dinja, Senior Managing Director for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on business accelerators. My guest today is Greg Souter. He's the founder of Smart City Works, an infrastructure actuator in Herndon, Virginia. Welcome, Greg. Thanks, Casey. Great to be here. As you know, launching an innovation can be difficult and riddled with challenges. How can a business accelerator help with this process? Yeah, Casey, that's probably uh, an understatement, actually, especially in this industry. If you think of um, innovations and where people are trying to get a new idea kicked off, they tend to focus around the technology, but there's so many other things they need to think of. You know, what it means to start a new business, what it means to be an entrepreneur, and then legal, financial aspects, moving a technology through its, uh, its development curve. All of those things need to happen. And what an accelerator is about is helping them on that journey and accelerating that process. How does an actuator differ from an incubator? Yeah, yeah. Let me start. And I'll actually talk about an incubator and accelerator and what makes us a little different as an actuator. So the term incubator is about usually uh, shared space and providing an opportunity for companies to collaborate and grow over time. So unlike an accelerator, which is on a fixed time frame, incubators don't have a fixed time frame. So they usually have similar ideas or, uh, or inventions that they're working on. They work on those together, and they provide some resources to help them through that process. An accelerator, on the other hand, is on a fixed time frame. So our actuator is on a three-month time frame. It's an immersive experience, an in-person immersive experience. So a typical accelerator provides uh, resources usually around mentoring and preparing the companies to get to the place where they can be invested in. And what makes our uh, accelerator, and the reason we call ourselves the world's first business actuator, is we do more than that. Given the challenges of working in the infrastructure environment and actually getting ideas placed and commercialized in infrastructure, uh, given the nature of infrastructure, the fact that it is so parochial, um, the fact that procurement regulations tend to be uh, very difficult to overcome, mm -hmm. and the challenges around technology. Um, an actuator is somewhat different in that we do the typical things an accelerator will do, but in addition, um, we also focus in some other key areas. So the first one is around technology, helping the companies overcome their technological challenges, and we've got a broad ecosystem of partners to help do that. Um, the second is in thought leadership. So we also want to focus on the development of the technologies and shine a bright light on those things that we actually think can make a difference with an infrastructure. We're also focusing on areas like uh, the demand signal. So what are the biggest, most significant challenges that cities are facing? And helping identify technologies which can overcome those. And third and final, which is somewhat unique, is the opportunity to get um, these best ideas and these inventions and solutions into cities via test beds, pilots, and example projects. So it's very important that we get them tested out, that they're tested from a scaling perspective, and they're tried out in real-world situations, again, to really advance that commercialization cycle. That's interesting. Thanks. What kinds of products or businesses are you looking for? Yeah, so um, uh, Smart City Works is actually looking across the whole array of infrastructure challenges. Water, wastewater, uh, energy, smart buildings and structures, um, power, resilience, all of those areas as well as uh, what I call key enablers. So things like smart materials, uh, areas like uh, artificial intelligence, um, optimization, uh, using all of those uh, advanced technologies in those areas as well. What differentiates a good smart idea from a market ready idea? Good question. Um, you know, a smart idea is a, is a terrible thing to waste. Mm -hmm. And there's a ton of great ideas sitting on the shelves all over the place. Just take the example of universities. They come up with a lot of great ideas, but a lot of effort uh, into, into ideas that could really solve issues but they never make it out of the gates. And that's, you know, as we said in the beginning, <coughs> it's so hard to overcome 
the momentum sometimes of getting an idea from that ideation stage mm -hmm. to the point where it can actually be commercialized. Mm -hmm. So when you think about a market ready idea, mm -hmm. um, it's something that you know, you've had the opportunity, and again, it's one of the things the accelerator focuses on, is really making sure that you understand the problem that needs to be solved, mm -hmm. right? That you have um, real uh, markets identified and customers identified who are ready to take in that product. Mm -hmm. That you've got something that's scalable and you've got something that folks are willing to invest in. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day as well, one of the things we really focus on is making sure that these products are really going to make an impact. You know, we want to invest in and help develop ideas that are going to change infrastructure for the better. Greg, you have smart cities in the name of your company. How will the actuator help civil engineering and make cities smarter? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, the, the industry and I think uh, the population in general actually struggles with this idea of what a smart city really is. And one of the things that's most interesting right now and one of the reasons I'm so excited for the accelerator to get off the ground is, um, you know, we're in the middle of a technological revolution and we're just starting to see those technologies starting to be deployed in cities. If you think of a city today and you think about its infrastructure, whether it's your transportation, your water, your buildings, your lighting, your communications, um, all of those are disparate systems today. Mm -hmm. None of those talk to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, none of those relate to each other. And typically, we're not taking all of the information that we could learn from those systems and, and using that in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Also, we tend not to relate directly to the infrastructure nor the infrastructure to us at all. And what a smart city is about is, one, linking up all of those elements of the city so the infrastructure is talking to each other, and two, providing more information for the, um, the infrastructure elements of the city to be able to talk to its inhabitants. Mm -hmm. you know, so when you think of things like congestion, you know, it's a great example of if you've got smart infrastructure, it should greatly reduce the congestion in a city. You know, if you think about the majority of congestion relative to automobiles, mm -hmm. the biggest piece of that is people looking for parking in big cities. So if you can uh, address the parking issue through technology, mm -hmm. you're getting real-time information about uh, where mass transit or where automobiles should be going, you know, be able to reduce congestion and then reduce pollution, again, it's just one example of mm -hmm. how you can get to a place where, um, where a smart city really starts to make a difference. Well, it's very interesting and it seems to hold a lot of promise for the future. Thanks for joining me today, Greg. I appreciate you being with us. Thank you, Casey. Pleasure to be here. For more information on ASCE's Interchange Program, visit ASCE.org interchange. Thanks for tuning in today and we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange.